everybody to the resume and cover letters essential course sponsored by the Willow Creek Employment Services Ministry. My name is Jean Stoner. I'm a freelance consultant. I've been with the ministry for over 10 years. My background, I was with Motorola in human resources for 30 years, left Motorola, was laid off, went through outplacement, and was so impressed with the program, I chose to become a professional outplacement consultant, which I've been doing for the last decade. I've written hundreds and hundreds of resumes um, and, and um, stay on top of industry best practices. So I'm excited to share with you today some of the essentials that you need to write a really terrific resume. And I wanna introduce my friend, Rob O'Brien, who will be co-teaching with me today. Hi everyone, my name is Rob O'Brien and I am a managed services consultant for Cloud for Good. I work in the Salesforce industry. Um, however, my background is actually in recruiting. I owned a temporary help company for over 10 years and then went into corporate recruiting. So many of the ideas and thoughts that I share with you today are gonna be from that recruiter's perspective. Thanks, Rob. Let's start today with a prayer. We know it's a tough time for all of us. Our prayers are with you and your family. And for today, let's look at Let's think about fear for a minute. Fear not for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. From Isaiah 41.10. Uh, so our ministry is here. We're here to provide um, confidential prayer requests if needed. You can send these to us, post the workshop. We also have an array of services which, will be reshare, which we will share at the tail end of the program so you know that you have support through this program as well as many other resources. So what's, what are we trying to accomplish today? We want to focus on hope. Hope that you can learn to write or edit your resume that gets you noticed Hope to help you write a wonderful cover letter to make you stand out from others. Hope that you go to our Needs Met website to find more wonderful resources. And hope that you can share what you learn with family and friends so everyone can, can um, have positive light through the next um, month or two and to help them find new opportunities. Resume writing is a three-step process. It's important to plan before you write. And we're gonna show you what, what you need to do to plan well. We're gonna show you how to write a good resume and also editing is, is super important because these resumes need to be perfect. They're, the writing needs to be well, you know, no spelling errors, good grammar. So we'll, we'll highlight what's important about the editing process. So planning is, is what you need to do now before you sit down to write the resume. And I love to use the GPS as an analogy because the more you know where you're going, if you know what road you're driving, what type of job you're targeting, ideally a, a, a specific target before you write the resume, you'll be much more successful. And I'll show you why. So many times people don't know what, what they're targeting to do next. And if that's your situation, I would say go into linkedin.com or an easy job site called indeed.com or our wonderful Willow website called willowcreek.needsmet.org and search for jobs. You need the jobs. Ask yourself when you see qualifications, can you do 80% of that job? Um, look at the keywords and say, are those my skills and my knowledge that I have that show that I can do that job? If yes, that's a wonderful target for you. If you still don't know what you're targeting, I encourage you to reach out to our one-to-one -one counselors, ask for their help. Um, go to your local community colleges, online programs, do some assessment work, because it's really important to figure out what you want to do before you write. 
the reason this is so critical is when you apply for a job, you are applying um, to 200 applicant tracking systems out there. They're computer systems and they rank your resume based on the keywords used from the top to the bottom of the resume. We call this search engine optimization. And the, the reason that we want a targeted resume is they are looking for keywords and we have to have keywords in your resume to get a high score for you to get to a person. So that's, we'll go into more detail on this, but we want you to think about as you plan, what, how, how can you work well with these applicant tracking systems and get your resume through the computer to the person? And then we'll show you some tricks of doing that. There's lots of rules for applicant tracking system, and this is a lot on a chart, but I just want to highlight a few for you. First of all, use a Word document. Don't use a PDF file or don't use templates that you find online. The reason for that is computers can't read them. The only tool a computer can read is a Word document, either DOC or .docx. Um, anything else, you, there's no guarantee your resume is going to get through the tracking system. Fonts are important, and I'm going to go to the bottom of this slide and talk about fonts for a minute. We tend to recommend that you use the sans serif font, so Arial, Calabrini, Verdana, or Tahoma. I typically, when I write, use Calabrini. Um, these are more modern fonts and they work with all the applicant tracking systems. There's other tips on this list that you can read through. One thing I do want to highlight though is no footers or headers. If your name is in a header or you have any information in the footer, that can't be read by the applicant tracking system. So make sure you delete, uh, delete headers or footers. Okay. So as we go through this next grouping of slides, I want you to think of yourself as a team working with me. We want to check your resume using a red, yellow, or green stop by chart. And I'm going to ask you questions and I want you to rate your resume. And if anything turns out to be yellow or, or, or red, that needs corrective actions. I'm sorry there's an error on the slides, um, but it's yellow or red, you need to take corrective action. First of all, let's talk about the layout of your resume. And a lot of you are just returning to work. You haven't worked for a while for a variety of reasons. And there's a trick on how to help show that story well. We call it the hybrid style resume. Um, so you can see if you just follow this order with um, a summary, skills, work experience, then education, and then adding these other topics, if they're relevant to you, to the resume. This is the order to follow, except for college grads, where you'll highlight your, resume, your education at the top of your resume um, before the work experience. And let me just show you what this looks like. Let's take a look at the Katherine Parker handout. Some of you have that downloaded. If you have it downloaded, take a look at it. If not, just follow the slide here. You're going to see that we start with the name, city, state, zip, phone, LinkedIn, if you're using it, and email. Notice that we have no address on top, personal address, because you may be posting your resume. And if you add an address, that's too much personal information. Then we have an introduction section. We have the signature strength section or key skills. Next slide, you're going to see um, an experience section where we showcase your wonderful work experience. Next slide, we at the end of the resume, we show any additional important information like your education, certification, continuing education, any software skills. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to showcase your software skills. And in this example, community service. So that just shows you the flow, how to lay out the resume, 
We'll go through each section in detail. We're going to start with um, the top of the resume. And I love this picture of a red car because you want to think of yourself as you were a brand. You're selling yourself. You're going to get those questions. Why should I hire you? What makes you the best candidate for the job? And the answer is because I'm a red Ferrari. And let's show you what we mean by that. You want to be able to show them that you're red, you're shiny, you're fast, you're cool. You have great features to offer them. And that's what we're trying to do at the top of the resume. So let's look at the top of the resume and understand. In this example, Katherine Parker, this is a person that has a passion for developing client trust and delivering unsurpassed service excellence. So this candidate chose to add a little snazzy branding statement at top to stand out from others. But what makes her shiny and red is look at the words in bold. Progressive career in the insurance industry, specialized in operation support, and a team leader. And in this case, she added a quote in there to showcase that not only she thinks she's red and shiny, but some of her senior managers agree and are, are giving a wonderful testimonial about why she's the best candidate. And modern resumes do tend to have nice little testimonials in there to kind of showcase you and make you stand out. So this is what we mean by personal branding. This is what we want the top of your resume to look like. Think about what makes you special. So an example is a school teacher, and I'm not gonna go through the details of this, but look at what makes her red and shiny and fast. She's a teacher with, a, with passion and experience. She's specialized in creating a fantastic classroom environment. She's effective, especially effective in lesson plans, assessments, designing learning programs, organizing special events. And her background includes some cool leadership experience. So what she's doing here is she's writing a story. I am a teacher, I'm specialized, I'm especially effective, and I have an interesting background. That's what makes her stand out, that's what makes her red and shiny and distinctive and better than other candidates. So what we have here, the top of the resume is the hardest part to write. So I just gave you some lists, some questions for you after this webinar, come back to this slide so you can think through what is your branding statement? What are you gonna do to sell yourself? What makes you stand out? And these questions will help you write a wonderful introduction to your resume. Moving on, we talk about keywords. Now we're moving into the keyword part of that resume. Where do you find these keywords? So you can Google, if you're um, a secretary, Google secretary keywords, and you will find a list of keywords in Google. You can go um, look for Google um, resume samples for a secretary, and you're gonna find keywords in those resume samples. You can go to a job board and, find, and search secretary resumes or sec secretary jobs, read the qualifications and keywords will jump off the page. Sometimes I say take a yellow marker and just highlight those keywords as you look at these job descriptions and read them. So where do keywords fit in? Right underneath that in intro, I write a, what I call a signature strength section. Some people call this key, key skills, core competencies. These, this is what the, um, is used to get you that score, that SEO score as your resume goes through the applicant tracking system. But notice that I have here in this example, nine keywords and then some words in bold. The, the keywords are what we call hard skills, customer service, customer experience, operation support. Those are hard skills that you see in job descriptions. But notice how I add some soft skills, achiever, dependable, disciplined, positive, collaborative. Those are keywords you'll find in the qualification section, but that they, you don't wanna showcase them. You wanna first show your hard skills, how you're perfect match for the job. 
then showcase your soft skills either here or in that intro section. Moving on. Experience is, um, you really wanna take your time to write the experience section and my partner Rob is gonna go into detail on how to write a very good, distinctive, accomplishment-based experience section. But there's some things just um, through the Katherine Parker example we wanna show you. First, you wanna introduce your company. Many times employers, the reader doesn't know what your company does. So see in this example under Katherine Parker, we have a little explanation about what is Allstate. The most important thing that reader is looking for is the title. So see how we, we have um, in capitalization, the title claim associate service, services and the date. Um, the title is important. You want to showcase it. You want to bold it. You want it to stand off the page. Then we add scope statement. In this example, this person's scope statement is what are you responsible for? So this is a US license adjuster responsible for regular business and catastrophic homeowners claims. You can be more specific. What region? What's your quota? Do you manage people? Do you have a budget? Um, do you work across the globe? Do you work in US only? The more descriptive you can be about your qualifications and your scope, the better. Then you see we have bullet statements. Bullets are what we call your achievements or cars. And Rob will go into this in detail. This is the most important part of your resume, the bullets, to show what you achieved versus what you did, because that makes you distinctive and stand out from others. So you can see, I'll just highlight the first bullet consistently exceeded daily closure goals, completing five to nine claims per day. The more numbers, the more measurable results, the more results you can focus on in this section, the better. Okay, moving on. Then you wanna complete your resume. These are the, the sections to add at the end of your resume. Obviously your education, if you have um, anything more than a high school degree, you just need to list whatever courses you've taken, even if you didn't complete your degree, list that you've attended some college. If you just have a high school degree, list that high school degree, but you do have to fill in the education section. Many times professional training is hugely important. If you don't have a degree and you've taken courses, load this resume up with any continuing education courses you've taken. Um, if you have certifications, super important. Software, list all the software you know, both the, the tools, the Microsoft Office software, as any specialization software you have for your job specialty. Add community service if you, if you um, feel that's important. And remember, if you're in the military, if you're a member of any associations, any awards, or patents, presentations, if you have a work portfolio, or personal recommendations, feel free to add them into the resume. So I think that uh, moving forward concludes this portion, this resume essential portion of the, of, um, the class. We'd like you to take a break, um, either come back to module three later today or come back tomorrow and you'll learn how to write a wonderful achievement-based resume You'll learn how to, how to find a, what's important about cover letters. And we'll also cover frequently asked questions, most importantly at highlighting how to make yourself look younger on paper. Uh, it's wonderful. I hope you've enjoyed what you've learned so far and look forward to, to um, talking to you in module three.